everyone, Christina here. Welcome to day 25 of the holiday card series for 2020. Can't believe we're at the very last day. For today's card, I'm using the Mary Mantle stamp set and the coordinating dies from Concord at 9th. And I wasn't entirely sure how I wanted to have these arranged on my card. So I actually stamped every single image from the stamp set onto some grid paper. I trimmed them out roughly and then played around with them and taped them together until I found an arrangement I liked. I'm going to be using some black watercolor paper today. Uh, the exact paper that I'm using is linked down below in the supply section. And I cut it to five by seven because I wanted this to be a substantial size for this card put the black watercolor paper in my misty stamp positioning tool and then I put the map my stamp map right on top I'd be placing the image from the stamp set over top of my stamp map that's going to help me get the positioning just right and then I can close the door of my misty and it uh, transfers the stamp to the door I can now flip up that stamp map and stamp directly down onto my black watercolor paper I'm going to be using some white embossing powder. So I've used a powder tool, it's, a, it's an anti-static powder tool that will help me get a better stamped impression of uh, just the, the lines will have embossing powder on it. I used a Versamark ink on the images of the stockings and then stamped that down. I'm going to be using alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe, it's a nice bright white. And I've chosen white embossing powder for this one because I'm going to be using some metallic watercolors today and I didn't want to have like a gold shade kind of uh, fighting with some gold watercolor. I didn't want that to be an issue so I decided to just go with white. And after I had all the embossing powder on there I just used a dry paintbrush to sweep away any of the powder that was on the outer edge. Used my heat tool to uh, heat and smooth and melt all of the embossing powder and then I stamped the mantle from the stamp set as well. I'll repeat the same steps for all of the heat embossing and then I'm also going to be stamping the individual stockings from the stamp set. I wasn't sure which stockings I would use. I ended up actually only using two of the four that I stamped but uh, I did stamp four at the beginning here before I knew what was going to be going on my card. So now I'm gonna get into the painting. And the paints I'm using today um, are actually from Fine Tech. This is their pearlescent color set of 24. And my lid broke off, so I'm just putting it underneath. And then I took out both trays of the colors. This is gonna be a pretty colorful painting. Starting out with the red shade and putting that right down onto the stocking. And I'm kind of trying to paint all of the areas of each color all at once before moving on to the next color. So I'm gonna to try to paint all of the red all at once, all of the green. Of course, it didn't work out like that completely in all of the cases on this imagery, but it worked out pretty well. I'm using a, a nice bright white silver um, to fill in those areas on the third stocking in. And for the second stocking, I used multiple colors. Um, I started out by putting quite a bit of gold and then I came back in with a teal shade and I just added a few different instances of that color and then came in with a little bit of purple and then I'm going to finish it off with that silver shade. So one of the stockings that I painted to go over the top and pop up off the surface of my card is actually that multicolor striped one and so I decided it's gonna go right over the top so I'll just paint it with the exact color scheme and you'll see that here in a minute. I added a nice bronze shade for the mantle and then I started painting all the individual stockings. So I'm starting out with that multicolor one. I'm going to be coloring all of the colors in the exact same positioning as what I did before and that's so that when I place that uh, popped up one over top that if anyone's going to see the colors underneath it will match the ones on top painted this stocking here and it's actually going to go over that solid red stocking 
that's in the center bottom of the grouping of stockings. And um, that the one on the big image that I painted before is just a plain red one. So these polka dots are gonna be really fun to have that additional imagery. I taped uh, the coordinating dies just over top so that I could hold those in place while I die cut. And I cut out both of the stockings that I painted. Okay, so at this point, I thought I was going to use a die cut Noel that was cut out of some gold foil cardstock. I thought I would be using that, but I'm gonna change things up here in a minute. And that's when my card design took a turn and it changed. Here I am just popping up the stocking on top for a little bit of added dimension. And then I'll add that polka dot stocking down below as well. Okay, so originally I glued the Noel right there beneath the mantle and it looks okay but I thought you know what there's got to be a better way to do this and when I peeled it up from the paper it tore a little bit of the black watercolor paper it's not going to be very noticeable on the final card so I decided to proceed and keep going with a different idea so I stamped the wreath and I followed the same steps that I did earlier by stamping it in Versamark ink applying some white embossing powder and then heat setting with my heat tool I then painted the wreath with two different colors. I'm using the green that I used on the stockings and I just went all the way around and kind of left some gaps. And then I came in with that teal blue shade and filled in all of the other leaves. Once that was all dry, I then grabbed the coordinating die and I cut this wreath out as well. Just ran that through my die cutting machine after I have it taped down. By the way, that tape I'm using is fantastic. <laughs> it's new. I've only been using it for about a week or so. It's fantastic. I'll have a link down below. Um, I really enjoy that tape. So I've cut down a more narrow strip of foam tape and I've removed the release paper on both sides so that I can bend and manipulate the foam tape to go around this wreath shape. I thought it'd be just a little bit easier for adhering. And then I placed it right over that center area and that covered up that torn piece of the mantle and most of the pieces of the torn watercolor paper worked out pretty well that way. And at this point I decided I did not want to use gold foil cardstock for the greeting and instead I would cut it out of some silver metallic cardstock from Lawn Fawn. And I thought it would just go better with the color of the mantle that's going to be directly behind the word. So I use the word Noel, it comes in the coordinating dies. So it's just an additional word die. And I put some uh, precision glue from Honey Bee on the back of the word, just where it overlaps the wreath. And then press that down right over the center area of that mantle. I really love how this looks like that layered effect with the mantle and then the wreath and then the word on top. I think it looks really, really special. And as I hold it up into the light, you can see how having those layered just looks really, really neat. So that is day 25 of the holiday card series. I can't believe we're at the very last day. Now I'm not going away. I know some of you only tune in for my holiday cards. I make cards year round on my, on my YouTube channel here. So please come back and visit. I'm gonna be going into some Valentine's Day cards next and I hope you'll stick around. On screen, I've got the three previous years of the holiday card series, all day 25. And if you want to check out the 25th day of each of the years going back to 2009, they will be listed down below in the video description. I'll be back on Wednesday for a live video at noon mountain time. I hope to see you there.